Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS reInvent 2017. Presented by AWS, Intel, and our ecosystem of partners. Hello everyone, welcome back to our live coverage of theCUBE here at AWS reInvent 2017, our fifth year covering Amazon Web Services and their massive growth. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Lisa Martin, here with our next guest is the CTO of WAN Disco, Jugain Sundar. Uh, welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you, John. You guys Thank are you everywhere. WAN Disco running the table on all these deals. So um, you guys have been doing extremely well with your intellectual property. What's new, you get some news? Yes, we do. We uh, recently announced integration with Amazon's AWS Snowball device, which gives you the ability to do migration of on-premise workloads into the cloud without downtime. And then the end result is a hybrid cloud environment where you can have an active for right environment on both sides. Um, that's a unique capability. Nobody else can do that today. What's it mean for AWS and their customers? Because they're very customer focused. What do you guys bring into the table? We bring a whole lot of big data workloads, analytics workloads, IoT workloads into their cloud. And the beauty of the cloud is that you may have a 20 node cluster on premise, but you can run analytics with a thousand nodes up in the cloud on demand and pay just for that use. We think it's a very powerful value proposition. Where are you seeing the most traction? You know, we, we were talking about the, the massive growth, at $18 billion annual run weight that, that AWS, and, and, and Andy's conversation with you, John, the other day, said we haven't gotten that big on startups alone. So um, even some of the things like the advertising that AWS is now starting to do sort of suggests they're going up, up the stack to the enterprise and, and to the C-suite. Where are you guys seeing the most traction with AWS? Is it in the enterprise space? Is it in the startup space? Both? So, um, somewhat because of our roots, what we're finding is that the large majority of big data customers and analytics customers from the last two, three years are all considering some form of addition of the cloud to their environment. If it's not a wholesale migration, it's a hybrid environment, it's a uh, bursting out into the cloud type of use case, and what they're finding is that growth of on-premise big data and analytic systems is slowing down because once you get to the cloud, the plethora of tools you have, the facilities that the scale brings to you is just unmatched. That's the trend we really see in the marketplace. We've seen uh, a lot of people go using the marketplace. Juniper Networks, for instance, is seeing some activity at the network. Who would have thought a network player is going to take advantage of the cloud? But this is what industrial strength cloud looks like. You guys have the active, active, where does that fit in for the customers who want to leverage the apps and don't want to worry about the networks? Exactly. The traditional model or thinking was use the cloud for backup. You have your on-premise stuff, the cheapest way to back it up is into the cloud. But that's really just scratching the tip of the iceberg. Once you put your data up in the cloud, you have the ability to have it strongly, consistently replicated, then you can do amazing things in the cloud. You can do a whole new analytic system. Perhaps you want to experiment with Spark in the cloud and have it on Hive on-premise. That works very well. Now that both sides are actively writable, you can create partitions of your data that are dynamically generated, written to both sides. These are things that people did not consider. Once they stumble upon it, it just opens their mind to a whole new way of operating. You mentioned Spark. I've heard some rumors and rumblings in the developer community here that they're running Spark on Lambda. You know, people are always hacking with new stuff. So Lambda serverless is coming down. How does that relate into some of the things that are driving when Disco's business, how do you relate to that? Does that help you, does that hurt you guys? It helps us. The way we look at it, we're all about strong replication of storage. Lambda is no storage. You talk to the underlying storage of some kind. It's S3, it's EBS volumes, whatever. So long as the storage comes through our system, any growth, any simple, easy way for applications to be written is hugely positive for us. What about the startups out there? We're seeing a lot of startups really kind of missed the mark, they misfired on the cloud. Um, and you're seeing some stars that have played it well. They've got in the tornado, as we say. In fact, Jeff, Jeffrey Moore, should, is, I think he's rewriting his book, Inside the Tornado, which is a management paradigm, but there really seems to be a new business model. You guys are like Evergreen at Wendisco because you have unique intellectual property. 
How are you guys working with that business model? And what are some of the things that you're seeing with startups and companies who are trying to play the cloud but are misfiring? Right, so Vandisco, as you know, stands for Wide Area Network Distributed Computing. And the cloud is like a, a huge bonus to us. It's all about the Wide Area Network. We are now consolidating a bunch of work in the cloud, but guess what? It's going to go back into the edge in some ways because the edges are getting smarter. You need replication between those. We see a lot of that coming up in the next two, three, five years. IoT workloads and use cases all involve somewhat of edge smart computing. We replicate between those really well. Lisa, so, as we always talk about, the trend is your friend. In your case, cloud is your friend. Indeed. It is. The cloud is all about wide area network computing and we are the ones who can really replicate strong How, how does the customer know what to, to do when it comes down to getting involved with WANDISC? Because it's not obvious. Spell it out. Why do they need you guys? When do you get involved? What specific things should be red flags to a potential customer or a customer who says, I'm going to go all in on the cloud? Unpack that. Let me give you a simple example. We look at Amazon S3. It's a cloud service, storage. But do you know that it's actually on a per region basis? When you create a bucket to put objects into that bucket, it's located in one region. If you want it replicated elsewhere, they have cross-region replication, which is an eventually consistent replication system that doesn't give you the kind of consistent results that you want. If you have such a situation, employing our technology immediately gives you consistent replication be it cloud regions, cloud to cloud, or on-premise to cloud. The end result is, the minute you step into replication across the van, every solution out there doesn't do it consistently, and that's our core. And that's like, your unique IP. Indeed it is. Okay, so I'm seeing Amazon ra racing to roll out regions. You got one coming in China, one in the Middle East. Re that's a big part of their strategy. Does that help you, or is that, what does that do? Absolutely, it helps us a great deal, partly because customers now do not look at their applications as a single region application. That doesn't fly anymore. The notion that my banking app cannot work because a data center went down is just not acceptable in the modern world anymore. The fact that we depend so much on these services means they need to be up all the time. More regions, more data replication, that's why we step in. So there sounds like a lot of symbiosis here. You talked about S3 and, and replication challenges. So tell us how Wandisco is actually helping AWS. That's one example, but help us understand the symbiosis with your relationship with AWS. So um, the best example I can give you is a large uh, travel service company in the internet. They had Hadoop infrastructure that was growing out of control. They wanted to manage cost by moving some workloads to Amazon, but didn't really know where to start. Because you can't do such a thing as take a copy of the data, ship it off on a snowball into the cloud, and tell the users of that data, stop writing to it now. It's going to be available in the cloud a week, 10 days from now, then you can start writing again. That's just not acceptable. This is a live data problem. The problem here is that you need to be able to ship off your data on snowballs, continue to write to your on-premise storage. When it shows up in the cloud, start writing there. Both are consistently replicated. You have a proper hybrid cloud environment. So this was a great bonus to them. As for AWS, they watch this and they look at it as an easy way to move vast majority of data from on-premise big data analytics systems. Have they been fuel to your fire in the sense that they've been on this incredible acceleration uh, of their innovation? And as Andy Jassy said many times to you, John, it's speed and customer focus. So how has their accelerated pace of innovation helped fuel WANDISCOs so that you, like you were saying, you know, the unique value prop, how have they really ignited that? So they started off with just plain Snowball two years ago. Last year they announced Snowball Edge, which is a pretty improved device. Now they have in the works um, capability to do some compute on those boxes. That's very interesting to us. Now our services can reside on the Snowball, it arrives at a customer site, he plugs it in, turns it on, instant replication capabilities. Those are fueled both by Amazon's drive and 
extreme speed and our own capabilities. So Amazon is is, is a, been a wonderful partner for us, partly because their charge to us innovation is quite amazing. Snowball, snowmobile, it's going to be a white Christmas for you guys. Business is good? Business is great. Okay, final question. What's the conversations you're having here this year? So what, share with us some of the quick conversations you're having in the hallways, meetings, Amazon got execs, partners. So um, most of the conversations are about moving workloads from on-premise into the cloud. I personally am very interested in the IoT use cases because I see the volume of data and the ability for us to do some interesting replication as being critical. That's where our focus is right now. Jigain Sudar, CTO of Wayan Disco, big announcements, partnership with Amazon Web Services and Snowball, replication, active, active, great solution for replication. You got regions across regions, check out Wayan Disco. Thanks for coming by, great to see you again. Congratulations on all your success. This is theCUBE, live coverage, day one is coming down to an end, the hall's open. We got two more days of packed, two cubes. Stay tuned for more, we got some great guests coming up, stay with us. <laughs>